from bed with violently long strings. The picture is drawing us down. It seems raised the virgin. Ushi na utami, mata hisa o tsuki. Kiramiku suna koboshi te kaki naosu. over. Hey, working hard as usual, huh? Welcome. Oh, it's just you. Don't you get tired coming here every day? Do you call that customer service? You need to greet your patrons with a smile, or you're gonna lose your business. I do appreciate your business, but you shouldn't act so high and mighty just because you buy a couple apples every day. Or are you here to have those two pretty ladies help watch over the shop like yesterday? I'm sorry. Watching over your stall was fun, and while I'd like to do it again... We have prior engagements to tend to today, so we are unable to do so. Our apologies. Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I was just kidding around. Damn, makes me uncomfortable when you respond so seriously. Just think of it as punishment for trying to take advantage of two innocent pretty girls. Jeez, you're really going off on me, huh? So, what do you want today? Honestly, nothing much. If you're just wasting my time, get out of here! Hold on, man. I understand why you'd say that, but bear with me a bit. It's been about a week since I came to the royal capital. I show up here every day, so it doesn't feel right unless I see you at least once. Now you're creeping me out. That just shows how much he likes you. Subaru, the shopkeeper helped you the other time, right? Is that why you started to like him? I regret being nice to stray dogs now. <laughs> Take responsibility! <laughs> Oh, you're so annoying. Fine, if that's all you're here for, look at my face all you want. And buy an apple while you're at it. You can at least take that with you, right? Well, I came all the way here, so I should at least do that. Now then... Wow, the apple is bright red and looks delicious. Is that for me? Yeah, I put my heart into that apple. That's why it's bright red. What are you going on about now? But thank you. I'll hang it up for decoration. You're supposed to eat it! Well then, Subaru. Now that you are done with your daily routine, are you ready? Yeah, we're good to go. When you've got a good flow going, you want to keep up the same ritual, you know? Ritual... I don't know about that, but you did talk about it a lot with everyone. Yes, let's make sure it's a success. Yeah. It must. I will. Maybe. You're gradually losing confidence. <sighs> I'm just kidding. Really. Let's do this. All right. Let's get started. Ready? Yeah! yeah! Why are you taking the lead again? <laughs> I knew I was different ever since I was a child. It's not that I was special or good at anything. I felt alien or just unusual. That I was different from normal people. But I didn't mind. Because the world was kind and it was very easy to live in. 
Everyone treated me well, and always listened to my wishes. They all worked so hard for me, so how could I hate my environment? Why would I think that it's painful? My younger self didn't understand that. That's why I decided to accept all the kindness in the world, and only gather the prettiest things to cherish them. I will only pick out the best parts. I walked over that thin ice, thinking nothing of it, laughing innocently. Faradar, my birthplace, the land where my family and clan lives. The evil-eyed tribe was banished from various lands because of their special powers and appearance that made them different from others. Faradar was the promised land of our evil-eyed tribe, the utopia that our ancestors found for us. In times of emergency, the evil-eyed tribe will answer to the summons of the country. That was the condition to stay in Faradar. Thus, there was a need to find those who had especially powerful evil eyes to answer to that call. Uh, once every few years, the children of the evil eye tribe took an exam to test the strength of their evil eyes. The evil eyes varied in power, so it was necessary to determine their individual abilities. Those with powerful evil eyes were to await the call to action. That was the law of the evil eye tribe. My brother and I were no exception. That's why... <sighs> so many people lying over the grassy plains. I was shaken violently while I watched. I didn't understand what was happening. All the adults and children alike were collapsed on the ground. I quietly watched as their faces turned bright red and they bumped into each other and fell. Why? 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 That question cycled through my mind. I was overwhelmed by my emotions. But I knew, deep down, this is what I caused. My mistake. My sin that I must bear. My evil eye. The evil eye of calamity. Indoctrination. That is the power of my evil eye. It is a rare power, and it had not appeared for hundreds of years. I was taught that it was dangerous, powerful, and that it can bring misfortune to many people. They say someone with the same evil eye as you existed hundreds of years ago. If I can learn more from the adults, it might help you. My brother who came to see me researched it for my sake. He was told never to visit me, but he managed to slip past the adults all the time. Since the day of the exam of my evil eye, I was imprisoned in a shack far away from the village. I understand that they had no choice. No one died, but they very well could have. All because of my evil eye of indoctrination. During the exam, I didn't know the powers of my own evil eye. The voices urging me on started to scare me. I felt so afraid. So I made a wish. I'm scared, so stop rushing me. I think that was the wish I made. By the time I realized it, Everyone around me started to hurt each other until they collapsed. They were no longer able to make noise. The people I touched did all of my bidding. The power of the evil eye was terrifying. Until I learned of the power of the evil eye, my world was kind and gentle. But that world changed instantly. Everyone was kind to me only because they were deceived by my evil eye. The world was not kind. Everyone was afraid of me, so this was the perfect place for me. Don't be dumb. Seeing my own sister be in prison makes me a terrible brother. But, brother... No buts. I won't allow this. I'll convince the adults to change their minds. My brother was the only one angry for me. And he told me that he had to change things. But that meant... Mm, brother... You're so kind. But is your kindness real? Or is it because I touched you and wished for it? My... evil eye. I looked at my palm and saw the evil eye in the same place as my brother's. But something about it made me afraid. <gasps> Uh-oh. It crumbled. I messed it up. Huh? What's a girl doing here? Hey, you! What are you doing? <sighs> hmm? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? It was a boy about my age. I was frozen because I was surprised. 
but he looked at me curiously. No answer, huh? Don't tell me this cute girl is a statue. That would be a shame. Who... are you? Oh, good! You finally talked! Yeah, I knew you weren't some statue. Upon saying that, the boy gave a big smile. I was so very surprised at that. No one in the settlement would smile for me like that. Nobody would smile unless I asked them to. My name's Tiga. I got a bit lost. But then I saw this little shack. I was wondering if there was someone inside and took a look. And then, there you are. The boy smiled innocently. But that was impossible to me. Everyone in the village feared me because they knew how dangerous my evil eye was. So they used the power of an evil eye to make all who approached the shack where I was held feel unpleasant and want to stay away. My brother's evil eye. <sighs> hmm? You're getting quiet again. You must be a shy one. Or do you have some kind of rule about how you're not supposed to talk with outsiders? I sure hope not. I'm an errand boy for traveling entertainers. I've gone to many different places, so I know some people have laws like that. The boy nodded to himself. He seemed to know everything without me having to say anything. While I was still silent, the boy put his finger on his lips and winked at me. Okay then, let's make this our secret. You didn't see anyone, and I never came here. Oh, but it's true that I got lost, so I'd appreciate it if you can tell me which way to town. Then I'll get out of here. <sighs> oh, maybe you don't know? Okay then, guess there's nothing I can do about that. Hmm. I wonder if I can guess my way back. Looking worried, the boy cocked his head, then turned to leave the shack. Thinking that I'll be all alone again after he's gone, I grabbed his sleeve. Uh, <sighs> what's wrong? You want to talk to me, or are you going to tell me how to get to town? Um, well... Or... or do you need something from me? <sighs> that question made me shiver. I didn't know how to answer him. I shouldn't have even thought about what I wanted from him. And yet, that didn't stop my wanting. I want to live together with my family again. I want to see brother stop being so angry and to smile again. I want to apologize to those I hurt. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. I hate it. I hate it. I hate... I hate it. I... When my palm touched the boy, my evil eye stung. It was as if it was telling me to say my wish. As it got hotter, and hotter, and hotter, feeling elated from that heat, I... come here. Hmm. All right. Huh? I knew I was being selfish. Right at the moment I gave in to my desires, the boy smiled and placed his finger on my lips. The gesture was meant to keep me from saying anymore. He smiled. If you're afraid of being alone, I'll be with you. <sighs> huh? Is that not it? I shook my head to the boy's question. That's good. Why? Hmm, let's see. The ringleader of the traveling entertainers I'm with always told me, he said, if you ever find the right girl, never let her go. <sighs> well, I guess you could say, it's love at first sight. After saying that, the boy sat next to me and told me about many things. He was orphaned for as long as he could remember. He was adopted by the traveling entertainers. He told me about all of the people he traveled with. The boy was a great storyteller. I lost track of time and my loneliness as I was absorbed in his conversation. Who is he? How did you get in here? Brother came into the shack and made a very angry face when he found the boy. I shrunk away in fear, but the boy held my hand. Nice to meet you. My name is Tiga. My adoptive parent, the ringleader, gave me the stage name Tiga Raulion. I see, Tiga. So what are you to my sister? Sister? You look nothing alike. Well, let's set that aside. Hmm, about me. The boy looked at me. From his gaze, I finally realized that I never gave him my name. M Melty. I see. Got it. I am your sister Mel's friend. I will never leave her alone again. I will stay by her side and protect her. You're strange. That's the first thing you say? The ringleader once told me this. Never be too shy to say what's important. If you don't, you have no right to be mad when they get taken away from you. I don't want to regret anything. 
so I won't hesitate to speak my mind. I see. Fine then. I'll have you know that being by my sister's side will be tough. For starters, I'm your first obstacle. Well, you're a worthy challenge. The boy smiled at my brother's words and held my hand. He never let go, even once. And even now, that hand... <sighs> Those memories always come back to me whenever I pray. The day that my evil eye pushed people away. The day that Tiga came to me. Then, the day I bound Tiga. In order to keep his promise with me, Tiga stayed behind in Faradar. We've been together since. He parted ways with the traveling entertainers who raised him without a proper goodbye. And from then on, he was by my side. And that made me happy. And I appreciate it. But I've always wondered. I didn't say it out loud on that day. But I did have a wish. I thought that my evil eye deceived Tiga and took away his freedom. That I had bound him to me from that moment. I may have selfishly forced Tiga to sacrifice his own future just to stay with me. That thought makes me so ashamed. I'm a terrible person. What's so terrible? Ah! You're so lively this morning as usual, Mel. You were really into that shouting during your prayer. I, I don't shout when I pray! And you never do what I ask! Sorry, that's not what I meant. Jeez, Mel, you're such a worrywart. Don't look so down. When the royal candidate is like that, you'll make the people who support you get worried. I don't understand how anyone could support me. You know how I feel about it, Tiga. Mel, I've always told you, this might have all started because of the evil eye, but the rest was... You two are rather passionate for this early in the morning. Sakura. Oh dear, Tiga, don't look at me like that. You're scaring little old me. And we need to be on friendly terms, or the others may start to get suspicious. That wouldn't work out so well for you, Tika. Oh, my mistake. It would be your precious Melty who would really be in trouble. Don't you agree? <sighs> Why, you... Tika, it's okay. Mel, but... I'll be okay. I'll do as I'm told. <sighs> Melty, you're such a good girl. I love obedient children. So, what are we supposed to do today, Sakura? Let's see. I wanted to get rid of that annoying half-devil servant, Subaru. Subaru? Why single him out? This is just a hunch, but I sense something strange about him. He was the one who discovered my spies at the manor and also got in Wolf's way. That's why I thought it was the right time to send the Dusk Bandits after them. But that ended in failure as well. Of course, I partially blame you two for that. It wasn't just us there. There was Subaru's bodyguard, Rem. And the finest of knights was there too. Those guys didn't stand a chance, whether we were there or not. Yes, I agree. That's why I didn't punish you as long. <laughs> Tiga? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Anyway, you want to move on Subaru, right? Hmm, I don't know yet. What do you think is best? If I come up with something too terrible, you might betray my plans to your friend. If that happens, I'd be in deep, deep trouble. <sighs> I wouldn't do that. And I can't. You already know that, Sakura. What's most important to me is Mel. Nothing will tip the scales against her favor. I see. Glad to hear that. Still, considering recent events, I guess it's imprudent to try anything on Subaru. So let's stay put for today and concentrate on gathering votes for the royal selection. Gathering votes? 
Are we meeting with the higher-ups at the castle to use my evil eye again? Of course. Go and give them a little coaxing. <laughs> this is so wonderful. Just touching them and smiling can put them under your fingertips. I envy your powers. Because I... <laughs> I'm already at my limit just making these children do as I say. Sakura, stop this! Stop scaring Mel! What's the point of all this? <laughs> the point? <laughs> the point is to see your faces! <laughs> so funny! So pitiful! If I don't strike fear in you from time to time, you'll start to get the wrong idea about me. You'll actually believe I'm a kind, considerate, temperate woman. <laughs> Isn't it time for a meal? Melty? You need your nutrients for your precious body. I'm still okay. I'm fine. So please, please get those bugs away from me. Come on, don't be like that. Mother has tasked me with keeping you in peak condition. If anything were to happen to you, I wouldn't be able to face Mother. <sighs> Mel, don't listen to her. You really think she has a choice? <sighs> I'll do it! So, please... Mel! Come on, don't interrupt, Tiga. I know she's very self-sacrificial. What a benevolent nun she is. Well then... Tiga, please... Mel... Looks like someone is here. Huh? You're so dense. There's a visitor at the church. We can't let them see this. Excuse me. I assume you are Miss Melty Pristies and the members of her faction. Um, yes. I see. So, you are... Yes. I'm a messenger from the castle. There is important news about the royal selection, and all candidates must be brought there. D to the castle? Right now? Oh my, this is sudden. We haven't heard about that at all. The Council of Wise Men are terribly sorry. Excuse me, but I would like for you to come with me. Um... Um... We have our own schedule to run, so it's too sudden. So at least for now... Can I assume you are okay with letting the other candidates get an advantage, then? Hmm. Excuse me, I was out of line. However, although the royal selection has been delayed, it can be said that its preliminary competition has already begun. It may not be wise to fall behind any candidate in this battle of intelligence gathering. I'm sorry, I'm speaking out of line. I beg for your forgiveness. Interesting. But you do have a point. What do we do, Sakura? Maybe we should accept the invitation for Mel's sake. Of course you'd want that. It would interrupt our earlier activity. Don't take it out on me. It's not my fault someone came here. Y yes The castle, is it? I'll go! Please take me there! <sighs> oh, fine. Yes, thank you. The dragon carriage is already prepared outside. Please come and board it.
But this is odd. What do you mean? This unexpected summons. We couldn't get the Council of Wise Men on our side, but that high-ranking civil servant is under our thumb. Or should I say, he's Melty's ally, which makes us privy to everything that happens at the castle. Considering how we weren't notified first, I would have to say that they're getting lazy on the job. have to deeply reapply the power of your evil eye again, Melty. <sighs> impossible because you're so utterly distrustful of humanity you're so distrusting of people you can't be with anyone unless they do your every bidding you can't feel at peace unless you can completely control someone that's not That's why you should be ruler. <sighs> Control everything to your will. There's nothing wrong with that, so let's do it. Once you become ruler, you can do anything. You can make them submit to your evil eye, or you can use your political authority. That's the only difference. Do you understand? It doesn't matter if you are a legitimate or an imposter candidate, because you were born to rule. Me? A ruler? Yes, that's right. Your evil eye gives you the right to trample on others, and a ruler has the right to trample on their subjects. If dominating someone is proof of power, then you were already born with it. Your evil eye is your crown. Melty, I want you to become a true ruler. <sighs> I know we don't have the best relationship. It's natural for you to hate me. I've been deliberately acting as such to make you feel that way, after all. But my desire to make you ruler is real, if nothing else. You have the power to make it happen. And if you have the ability, why not? I don't know. I don't understand. That's enough! I tried to keep my mouth shut, but you kept saying those awful things to Mel. You're way out of line. Mel is not like you. Oh my. Did I make you upset? Don't tease me, you vile woman. Mel's evil eye has controlled her life, 
And of all things, you call that her crown? When did Mel ever want that? It was all your idea! Power and birthright are not determined by your desire. They are given. The royal family that died the other day just happened to be born as royalty, right? It's the same with the evil eye. It just so happened that those with power were given the right to use it. Wouldn't it be an insult to let such a treasure go to waste? Why, you... Please stop! <clears throat> I know. I really do. It's all my fault. So, I'm sorry. So, please, stop fighting! No. Goodness. You're way off the mark yet again. You're so naive. You're going to regret it if you don't wise up soon. We were being kind of loud. Maybe that guard heard us. If that's true, just have Melty use her evil eye to shut him up. You don't have to say it like that. I think I put it kindly enough. At least I didn't use the word coax this time, right? <laughs> Huh? Weren't we heading to the castle? But... But what? The scenery. Something's off. Huh? Hey, you! What's going on here? Bestie! <gasps> what? Is that... Mel! Joke! Awesome! I knew I could believe in you, bestie! You make it sound so easy. What would you have done if I didn't notice? You put Mel in danger, Subaru. You didn't notice? The thought never even crossed my mind. Ladies' men like you wouldn't miss such opportunities. I don't know what you're talking about. But I can tell you're being ridiculous. Anyway, why did you do this? Are you trying to declare war on us? Wait, no, it's the opposite. We're the ones who saved you! Huh? Come on! We're here to save you! I was racking my brain thinking about how to get you out of that awful situation! We also managed to come up with a plan after deliberating over it, and finally put it to action. <sighs> Tiga? Are you serious? I can come up with pretty big lies while keeping a straight face, but I wouldn't do that now. I really did come to save you. And her. If possible, I want to help Solemn, too. Subaru. Don't worry, bestie. I'm the kind of man that doesn't give up on happy endings. Happy what? I don't really understand what you're saying, but I like the sound of it. I don't get what's going on, but I won't regret trusting you, right? Yeah, I swear on our true friendship! Jeez, we don't have time to talk. You know we have to hurry. That voice. Yeah, the star is here. The world's best, prettiest, silver-haired girl. You mean... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There! It stopped! You can come out now! Hey, hey! Sorry for the wait! 
We got here as fast as we could. Miss Amelia? And Ferris, too. Yoo-hoo, Tiger! Let me guess, are you in trouble? We know the whole story, so leave it to us. What do you mean, you know? I couldn't figure anything out on my own, so I gave them all the details. What? Anyway, here's our miraculous and magical helpers. Just leave Melty to us. You told everyone? Hey, come on! There, there, don't fight. Miss Melty is your priority, right? Or can I just call her Melty? Paris, that's not important right now. Come on, hurry and bring her to the dragon carriage. Subaru, what's going on? Let me relieve your worries for now. We have a plan for Melty's throat. And? And? I think the chains that bind her can be dealt with, too. You're not alone anymore. Let's fight together. Man, you really are something else. Oh my. Looks like everyone is taking a bow already. <laughs> I can't allow that. You won't have your way. Sakura! Subaru, what is with you, really? You keep messing up all of my preparations one after another. Now you've even set up a trap for me. You're a loser. You don't have it in you to be somebody. And yet you accomplished this. Sad to say, but I can't really disagree with that. Still, I may be a loser, but this is the result of my desperate efforts. Oh? And since you've been losing to a loser like me, that makes you a loser too! I take back what I said earlier. I admit you do have an unrivaled talent for impudence. Enough! Are you serious, Tiga? You really want to defy me? After all we've been through together? You're the one that jumped in the way between Mel and me. Unfortunately for you, I don't have a speck of affinity for you. I'm actually happy I can finally sever ties from you. It feels like this has been a long time coming. Tiga! We... Leave this to me and go! Hey, that line! Yeah, I know how awesome I sounded just now. So let me have my moment here. You said you're safe, Mel. I'll believe in you, Subaru. So go! I'll hold back, Sakura. Can you really do it? I can't call myself a man otherwise. You're right. Don't you die on us, Tiga. Subaru, where's Tiga? We're leaving him behind. This is where he'll show what he's made of. I don't understand you sometimes. <laughs> Maybe you should have had your little friend's help instead of fighting alone. I know what you're trying to do, Sakura. Like you said, we've known each other for a long time. You're stalling for time. Because the longer we wait, the better advantage you'll have. You still have your ace up your sleeve. If they make it here, we lose. So I'll make sure you're separated from that ace to increase my chance of winning. Oh, you're so sly. I really hate how you've grown up. I've always thought your personality was fitting for an insect, Master. Tell me, did you become a bug tamer because of your personality? Or did you get that personality from being an insect, Master? Which came first? You really don't know when to shut up. No wonder you and Subaru are friends. You're exactly the kind of person he attracts. What kind? The kind that irritates me!
This is a surprise. I knew that you were training hard to protect Melty. But you didn't expect me to be this good? Don't worry, Sakura. I wasn't hiding any secret powers from you. You already know that I'm just an ordinary person. Unlike the Sword Saint, the finest of knights, or the Blue, I have no special powers. However, <laughs> I must defeat you in order to save Mel. So I honed my skills for that purpose. That's a beautiful story. I've never received such a passionate confession. You might even make Melty jealous. I have another confession for Mel, so don't worry about that. Thanks for everything, Sakura. May you have the serenity and the guidance of the Divine Dragon. good dragon. Both the dragon carriage and land dragon were borrowed from Cruchet. She's one impressive duchess. Can't underestimate that power. That could be part of it. But this dragon is amazing on its own. It really liked you, Subaru. Oh, right. I really don't know why, though. It's our dependable land dragon, buddy. I'll name you Patrice. Hey, you can't just give her a weird name like that. We have to return her to Cruche later. I know that, but now I'm starting to feel more attached. Considering how much work I did at the royal capital, would it be possible to get a land dragon as a reward? There you go again. What would you do with the land dragon? Taking care of them is a lot of work. <sighs> Are you my mom or something? Huh? I'm not. You're not supposed to take it seriously. Now it's awkward. I know you're worried about Tiga. Yeah, I am. But worrying about him undermines his bravery. You boys are such a pain. Yeah, we sure are. This is something we will never yield on. Right now, we need to get working. Melee, where's the next point? I think we're almost at our rendezvous point. And about the others. If that bunch doesn't do well, I think things will turn out real badly down the line. In any case, they've all got some eccentric personalities. I'm not worried about that part. Is everyone okay? I can only believe. Melee. 
Okie dokie. I haven't heard that phrase in a while. Wait, now's not the time for that. That attack was... <laughs> well, aren't you lucky you survived? I was trying to flip over your entire dragon carriage. You've done it now. Thanks to you, Sakura is losing her mind. That feels great. Wait, now's not the time to be saying this. Melty is in that carriage, so don't flip it. Oh, that's right. Anyway, good job to you, then. As thanks, I'll give you some hot flames. There he is! So that's the evil spiritual arts user that you talked about. Maybe I can talk him out of this. Hey! Listen up, Wolf! No! Solemn! What? We're trying to help Melty! We both want the same thing! We should work together! I know what you're going through. I heard from Tiga. We found out a way to resolve this. All that's left is... You're mistaken. What? I'm mistaken? Yeah, you've definitely got the wrong idea here. You could even say it's a fatal mistake. What mistake? You're Melty's older brother and... That's right, I'm Melty's brother, but I'm different from my useless other half. Other... half? I am the malevolent masked magician wolf. That name is true to its word. I am a different being from Solemn. He's useless in every regard, so don't lump me in with him. I will never accept the help of others. I will save my sister Melty on my own. No one will stand in my way! My, looks like Sakura isn't here. She summoned us and she's not even here? What an insult! Jeez, it's always like this. My patience is wearing thin. Aren't you also annoyed by this? I wish it would just stop. <sighs> You're like that again. Yeah, yeah, it's my fault for asking. <sighs> so you're solemn? I've heard about you. I'm Hoka. As you can see, I'm a fledgling, powerful, and beautiful great spirit. <laughs> That's a good reaction. Seems like you're speechless at the sight of me. No. You're not? You're just not that talkative? What's with that? Are you making fun of me? I'm not. Yes, you are. You have to speak more clearly or the other person will never know what you're trying to say. <sighs> Well, how about it? Or are you just gonna use that as an excuse and you don't care if you make the other person angry? And I'm sorry to say, but I don't think you and I will get along. You'll have to look elsewhere. I have a choice. Yeah. Okay, so there's no choice. But I have my pride. I'll never do something I don't want to do, even if I vanish for it. What about you? Do you have the conviction to follow through? <sighs> You're quiet again. All right, all right, I've had enough. You can just... I'm Solemn. Hmm? Solemn. That's my name. Huga. I want to be your partner. There is something I must accomplish. And for that, I need your help. My help? Yes, with your powers. My powers? Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Why'd you go so quiet again? I'm sorry. <sighs> Fine, then. I understand how you feel and that you aren't making fun of me. I know you can't help it. <clears throat> Fine. I'll form a contract with you. But remember this. Someday, you have to make sure you actually express your thoughts fully. That's the very first condition of the contract between us. <clears throat> hmm? Did you just laugh? Did something funny happen? Tell me! It's you, Puka. You were laughing at me! <clears throat> Here, 
You think you can cheer me up with candy? You think you can cool me off with this? Jeez, men are always like this. <clears throat> oh. Thanks for the treat. Phew. Only I would have such a kind heart to forgive you so easily. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, in the end... Is that... It's Sakura's bugs! Seeing that they're here... Not a problem. Uh, I know that, but it looks gross! Oh, what did she say? Wait. Candidates have made their move. <gasps> Did they find out? Seems like it. Melty has been kidnapped. What? What are Tiga and Sakura doing? Well, we're in no position to talk. Then where do we go? The slums. We'll take back Melty. <laughs> we managed to get here first. All that's left is to stop them, but... <sighs> Salem, can you do it? <clears throat> you idiot. I can tell what you're thinking just by looking at your face. How many years do you think we've been partners? Subaru and his friends kidnapped our Melty. <sighs> they... They're nice people. There's no mistake about that. But they have nothing to do with our objective. I know that. <sighs> the situation has changed. It's come to a point of no return. The life at the royal capital wasn't bad. Everything was so busy and lively. When the runt of a spirit picked a fight with me, it was nothing but trouble. <sighs> but it's time to say goodbye to that life. We have to make sure we're gone without a trace. <sighs> Can you do it? Hey now, gonna give her the usual silent treatment? That's no way to treat your partner. <sighs> you should already know that this job is too much for you to handle. Just switch out like you usually do. Turn tail and go into hiding. Wolf. Yup, it's me. You're me. Or am I my you? Well, whatever. Go! <laughs> Switch with me, my pacifist brother. You're too much of a coward to handle this yourself. <sighs> you can't kill them. Don't worry, just close your eyes and I'll take care of things like I always do. There's no need for you to get hurt. I don't have a heart to get hurt in the first place. We're just taking the roles that suit us best. You want to hug your sister with those arms, right? Then don't dirty your hands with the blood of the innocent. <laughs> Salem, what are you going to do? The dragon carriage is going to arrive soon. Wolf. 
wolf, please. Sure thing, you damn coward. <sighs> Looks like you're done switching. Obviously. I'm purposely dressing up for you because I would have felt bad if you got confused. This is all out of love for you. Cool! <laughs> you like that? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Anyway, do you know what the situation is? I've been listening from inside him. It would have been awesome if I got to see Sakura get all flustered. But hearing the panic in her message was good enough! Cool! <laughs> <sighs> Don't look at me like that, Puka. You and I will burn everything. The entire path will be a barren wasteland. And then we will go to our new world! <laughs> Doesn't that excite you? You're... What? Isn't it hard hurting yourself like this? <sighs> Don't look at me like that, Puka. I'm making progress. I'm not the same as that coward who's hiding. It's time! Let's get working, partner! I know. I'm your partner. That's what was asked of me, so I will follow through. That's right. Let's get this going. We're almost at the rendezvous point. Melee! Sure. What should I do? Oh, my. You're so obedient. Are you sure you want to follow my orders? It's a little late for that. We've come this far. I'll believe in you till the end, Subaru. <laughs> All 
right. This is great. Let's do this. You trust me, so I won't let you down. Neely, I'll tell you when to use your ice magic. Ferris, you get mentally prepared for the op. You can count on me. What's an op? I guess you don't have time to answer. I sure don't. We're starting the mission right now. Yeah, he circled around us again. That Subaru is strangely perceptive. I don't think that's the case. It's the land dragon that's doing all the dodging. It's not technique. It was all his luck in choosing the land dragon. He pulled the best land dragon when it mattered most. That's the kind of luck he has. I'd say it's a talent I don't have. You going soft on me? Then get out of here. I'll protect you and Solemn both. You two cowards can just go to the back and huddle together. Huh? <laughs> That's such an obvious thought. You think I would be affected by those words now? Give me a break, oh great spirit. I am Wolf. I play dirty tricks in ambush all the time. I swear on my title of malevolent mathematician to defeat any opponent. They'll be just another victim. Nothing more, nothing less. Wolf. Unravel, spill from the cracks. Give me the strength to rise up. <laughs> Run away all you want, you plebeians. I will burn you with my eternal flame. Why did they spread out their eyes like that? I've got a bad feeling about this. Maybe we should keep our distance. Nah, it's a pain. Whatever they're plotting, I'll incinerate them all here and now. Now, I don't have to be conservative and worry about being spotted by others. Wolf, you can't be... But I don't care anymore! I'll show them my full strength! Take this! Hey! What about Melty? It's over. Whoa! What's going on? This fog! What are they trying to do? There's three dragon carriages! They're all the same color and type. Which one's the carriage from earlier? All right! They're freaked out! The plan is working! I'm surprised that you came up with this plan. Using multiple identical carriages to confuse our pursuers? If it is underhanded tactics we are talking about, there is no one better than Barusu. That's not really a compliment! But we managed to catch the opponent off guard. Give enough time for Ram and me to jump in. Your little trick sure proved to be useful. That's definitely not a compliment! I can tell, you know! That's not my intention. Count on me. Oh, Miss Crochet, I'll do my best. Of 
course. I believe in you. I know you will give it your all, Ferris. Such turmoil before the royal selection has even started. Goodness, it is never easy. Miss Amelia, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Subaru and the others should be perfectly fine, too. Thank you so much for making it on time. That almost turned out very badly for us. I only did what was expected. Sister and I were very worried. We can't turn back after we've come this far. Let's keep going all the way to the end. Agreed. Let's do this. Two decoys and one real one. Damn, I can't attack carelessly. Uh, I know. Look at the coachman to find out which is which. Melty is on the dragon carriage with Subaru and his princess. You sure to make it that obvious? If they're going to switch around, they must have considered that. Oh, right. But... I know. Damn it, damn it, damn it! Sakura was right! Who the hell are you, Subaru Natsuki? I get the feeling that someone's mad at me. Of course. You have done many things that people would get mad at you for. Hey, shut up! Anyway, did you bring what I asked you? I've gotten all of it. Clean blades, a table for surgery, cloth, and water. All of it. This is rapid thorough. I only have superficial knowledge of it. But the most important thing is to keep everything clean. If we mess up here, it'll be terrible all around. Barusu, since you were so insistent about it, I put the blades over a flame beforehand. All that's left is... The inside of the dragon carriage should be clean, but... We can leave that to my buds. Ia, Kwa, Aro, Ik, In, Mess. They are all quasi-spirits that I've contracted with. Uh, quasi-spirits? They are one rank below spirits. You can think of them as great spirit candidates. Considering how I'm a knight in training, there's a bunch of candidates in this battle. That includes the fake candidate in front of us. All right. We cleaned the carriage interior as best we could. The preparation should be complete. We can start at any time. The divine protection of Wind Repel is working, so everything is stable. And again, we're assuming that the dragon carriage will get flipped on its side. You don't have any anesthetics or something that can reduce pain, do we? No problem. You're worried about pain? Then Fairy here's magic will lessen it. Really? I guess that makes sense. Pain from getting your throat cut is unbearable. Still, I didn't know you could mimic anesthetics. Water magic must be real convenient. When someone's heavily injured or they're very sick, all you can do is reduce their pain in most cases. Well... But that is why your magic is the gentlest in this world. I am proud to have you as my friend. Ugh, that's not what I meant. Anyway, get Miss Mialti onto the table. We need to get started immediately. <laughs> yes, sure. I know you don't have any friends, Barusu. Hey, I do too. And they're both working on this mission. Oh, and there's also one doing his best trying to sell Appas. Yes, yes, come on, Barusu, back to work. I know, I know. Jeez. <sighs> Melty, are you awake? believe in us. Uh. Melty? Uh. 
What? <laughs> that I... Get away from Barasu! <laughs> hey, Rom! Be careful! I did go easy on her. What made her lose her temper? N no, that's not it! This is an anger! Miss Melty, can you hear me? Please, say something. Uh... This is bad. It seems like her consciousness is clouded. Not only that... Is she being manipulated? Could that be it? 